call, maybe too much. And for many, the best place to be is jump up. It's St. Lucia's High Octane Street Party that takes place every Friday night, a time when locals and tourists can get hot and sweaty together. But for the police, the big crowds, free-flowing rum and heady atmosphere can be a cocktail for trouble. PCs Xavier and Ducas are on the trail of a missing motorcycle. It looks like they've found it, but this section of the crowd doesn't look too friendly. PC Xavier and Ducas are unarmed, outnumbered and isolated. The situation is turning critical. Xavier calls for backup. Within minutes, the full force of the Grosile police station descends on the area. Suspected ringleaders are tracked down and arrested, but the crowd is now an angry mob. Everyone's pumped up. In the back of the truck, Xavier's temper appears to snap. Relax yourself, my boy. You are under arrest right now. If you put your blood on me, you're problems. Who take my cap? Somebody take my cap for me. Relax, 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 man. Relax, relax. The men are thrown into cells while the police officers continue to challenge them. Relax. Why? Why don't you disrespect me like a boy? You know what I should do to you? I just know I don't shoot you. No, you cannot disrespect me. You send something to challenge my cap. Put food on your hands, my boy. Put on your fucking hands. You respect me and challenge me that kind of thing. Bike move, they move with the bike. Xavier steps outside to cool down and search for his missing cap. Where's my cap? The boy, take my cap. Where's your cap? One now, man, send the bottle behind me. Hit my cap. Yeah! Locked up, the suspects are questioned by the police until the early hours. You still get shot, cap. Give your fucking shot. Oh. As dawn breaks, PC Xavier reflects on the events of the night before. A group of um, lunatics, I can say, just surrounded us and um, overpowered us. We apprehended three of the, um, the guys, but they won't be getting away from anything. At the port of Castries, a shipload of day trippers are disembarking for a few hours of shopping madness in the famous open air market. Perfect destination, I think it's wonderful. Oh, it is. Very friendly. <laughs> Best friends Karen and Carol from Warrington have left their husbands and children at home and are taking St. Lucia by storm. We work together, we play together, we holiday together. We come away as families, but we also come away just on our own. It's a chance to stop being housewives and start acting like teenagers again. Let our hair down and let ourselves go. Yeah, it's <laughs> just great. It's one resort to being back to, to children. <laughs> Today, the Born Again teens are on a last-ditch shopping spree. They're flying home tomorrow and can't go back empty-handed. <laughs> Hey man, yeah man. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing, my girl? Yeah man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man.
Razipur is the manager of the market and a man who's always ready to give female tourists a helping hand. Good morning, Blue. <laughs> Have your husbands with you? No. Oh, no. But thank God, I love free women, man. I'll bring you guys some cigars, man. You know, you got cigars, you know, hold it on there now. It's gonna be like, you know... Karen and Carol's husbands could be in for a shock. This is Guava and Dave. When the man drinks that... Viagra? Oh, he drinks that. He's like Viagra. Come on. That's a stunning look. Hours, you'll be working and then let's stop working. Fill the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Raz can't leave the Shirley Valentines alone, and shopping soon gone out the window. Under the cover of darkness, St. Lucia's drugs unit enter a world that the tourists very rarely see. High in the Prali mountain region, an informant has tipped them off that a crop of cannabis is being grown. Led by Sergeant Terry Bradley, they carry out around 25 such operations a year, but their resources are limited. One of the problems we have, we don't have the use of air support. Um, we don't have any helicopters at our disposal. But what we use is um, our local knowledge. We know that um, the, 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 the marijuana is grown on the island. We get it on the streets, and we know what we get on the streets is more or less local products. So we just use our local knowledge to go out there. As day breaks, Bradley and his men have already hiked six miles through dense jungle. Just as the tip-off is looking like a false lead, they find what they've been searching for. Not too far from us, this condition. So you see, it wasn't that much of a long distance after all. Before them is an acre of land where the forest has been cleared. In its place, an illegal but highly profitable crop has been planted. Armed and ready for action, Bradley's men lock down the clearing. There is always a risk, so we, we, we practice safety. We don't want to get complacent and always believe that we're going to go into a safe environment. They could burn the crop where it stands, but Bradley likes to take no chances. He's determined not a single leaf is left for harvest, and each plant is uprooted by hand. Carefully, don't drop any along the way. We're not leaving any for the bad guys. Not at all. Not at all. I'm always particular, I don't leave anything behind. Not for them at all. They need to work quickly. It's a high-risk operation. Dope farmers are often armed. If they come back now, Bradley and his men could find themselves in a gunfight. When he approaches the farm, his first impression would be that somebody may have come to steal his crop. But as he gets slower, and if he's coming from this direction, as he gets slower, he may have realized that we burnt the crop. And he's gonna be pretty upset and um, he might not have a few nice words to say about the police. A couple of wood is down there, he's preparing a nice little fireplace. We're gonna stack all of them on the wood and we will burn it. The crop with a street value of $25,000 goes up in smoke. The middlemen and street pushers are going to have to look elsewhere. These guys, what they would do, they themselves probably would not be the ones going out there as an agent, selling it on the street corners. But they would probably have the clients that they would distribute in portions, maybe a few pounds, goes to various clients and they would make their money. And then it filters into the um, society. As part of their war on drugs, the exact number of plants is logged. So far we have um, eradicated a total of 2,038 plants. For Bradley, it's been a busy day at the office. This is very satisfying. This is good news for us. And as you can see, it's quite early. It's just about 20 past 7 in the morning, which is, um, I don't know if you guys, but it's good luck, but we, we found this condition very, very quickly. <laughs> With the last stalk ablaze, he rounds up his men. Okay, everybody, let me have your attention. We've already destroyed the marijuana that we found here. Um, I want everybody to ensure that they have all the equipment, everything they came with. We don't leave anything behind. And Regroup and let's get ready to leave. We will then maybe follow another 